channel. If you are new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification so that every single time I post, you'll be notified, which is every Monday. Except for last Monday, I had to take a break. Sorry I abandoned y'all, but all for good things. If you have not seen the community post yet or you do not follow me on social media, you would know that last Monday I took a break because last Thursday I was posting my first ever episode of my new podcast, Realer Than Real. I'm so excited, you guys. It's something I've like always wanted to do and I've always been kind of nervous, always been kind of hesitant, but in 2024, we're not putting our dreams on hold. We're not just saying we're gonna do things and never do them. 2024 is a year of putting your money where your mouth is and doing the things you want to do. So if you wanna go watch that first episode, it'll be linked down below. Also, all the podcast social medias will be linked down below. And yeah, if you go and listen, love you forever and I hope you enjoy. Anyway, for today's video on this channel, cause we're not gonna forget about this channel. I remember a while ago, I said, oh, I should like create a cooking series on here. And then I straight up just never did. But that's all gonna change right now. I need to make dinner for myself tonight. 2024 is also the year of, we're not gonna continue to like, eat these quick microwave dinners. No shade to the microwave dinners. No no shade to the easy air fryer dinners. No shade to any of that, but sometimes you just wanna have like a good home cooked meal. Um, So I'm gonna show y'all this chicken pot pie recipe that I think I have mastered. It's the perfect time for it because we're still in like the dead of winter. It's still very, very cold outside. So this meal is warm, it's hearty, it's comforting, it's filling, it's all the things. So without further ado, my meat of choice today is gonna be chicken thighs. In my experience, chicken thighs are just a little like juicier. They don't dry out as much as chicken breasts, but you use whatever cut of meat you would like. This is a small pack. I'm probably honestly just gonna use all of it. Raise your hand if you think the chicken is still kind of frozen because I didn't take it out in time. It is, but we're gonna work with it. Every time that I would get upset that my mom would be upset with me for not taking out the chicken in time, Mother, I am so sorry because you are absolutely right. Because now that I didn't take this out in time and it's not all the way thawed, it is pissing me off. <laughs> All right, first we're gonna coat our chicken in whatever oil you have lying around. I'm just gonna use vegetable oil. This is just so your seasonings will stick onto the chicken. Also, I wanna say this, y'all, I'm not measuring anything. So first up is salt. And yes, I do decant some of my products if I can. So this is salt in the show, I promise. I'm just going based on vibes. I'm gonna do about this much. Actually, no, because sometimes I'm a, I'm a little heavy handed with the seasonings. We're gonna start with this because we still have a bunch of other steps to season in. I'm not even gonna do the whole thing. I'm putting back that much. Of course, we're gonna use some pepper. Next is garlic powder. Of course, followed up by onion powder. Paprika, even though it doesn't taste like anything, it's really just there for vibes. I think this will be the last thing, the Morton seasoned salt. We're gonna take our glove and then just mix everything all around until we feel like all of our pieces are evenly coated and if you're ever like oh i don't think they're all evenly coated but i don't want to add like more of each ingredient i would just go back in with like your most like i don't know inclusive ingredient so i'm gonna go back in with the seasonal just to make sure everything is coated to my liking now again we will season everything when it's mixed together so you don't want to over season this part right here but you do still want your chicken to be seasoned all right, purr, that is to my liking. You can cook your chicken on the stove if you would like. That's your business. I personally am gonna use my air fryer because it's quicker. I won't have to clean up any pots after because I'm gonna put down some parchment paper inside. But also I like doing this because I'm able to like do other things. Like right now I'm in the middle of cleaning my apartment so I can put the chicken in here, do that, and then fold the laundry that's sitting on my bed right now. So I'm gonna use this. So I'm putting the chicken down in here. The pieces can overlap, but um, I probably wouldn't like recommend piling them up super high. <laughs> like they shouldn't be one on top of another, but they can touch and if they need to overlap, they totally can. I'll show you how I have it laid out in here in a second. So you see how I have it in my basket, like things are touching, sure, and there's even like a few areas where it's overlapping, but there's nothing like stacked on top of one another. Let's put her in the air fryer. So depending on what air fryer you have, um, the power settings will look a little different, but for the one that I have, I'm gonna hit this little menu selection button to go over to the chicken icon. That'll put it at 360 for 20 minutes, which works out just fine. I'm just gonna let her rock. Some recipes say to like, take it out, flip it over. 
I've noticed that I don't have to do that. The chicken comes out, you know, evenly cooked inside as well as outside. So I'm gonna let her do her thing. So while the chicken's cooking, I'm going to one, clean out this bowl because we wash as we go. Um, I also need to take out all of my baking bread that's in my oven so we can get ready because this dish does require baking. But I promise y'all, it's still easy. I feel like people here like, bake such and such for whatever. And you're like, like, oh my God. But I promise y'all, this is, this is gonna be one of the easiest recipes that has one of the best payoffs. Okay, so the chicken just finished in the air fryer. I feel like it looks a little iffy on camera, but I promise y'all, this piece right here, I feel like on camera looks pink for some reason, but I promise y'all, it's not. Like, it's very much done. The next thing you need for the pot pie is um, just various vegetables. I like a good carrot, string bean, corn, and peas mix. I have a frozen mix, but if you want to kind of handle all this individually and naturally, that's your business. Me, I'm gonna go ahead and get me a little frozen mix that you put in a microwave bowl with some water. I will say for this, it you want them to be cooked somewhat, but not all the way through because they are gonna go into the oven. And if you put fully cooked vegetables in the oven, I'm just kind of nervous about them being overcooked. So I always like under steam them in the microwave. So we're gonna go put these in there. I guess you could shred it if you want to. Me personally, I don't know what it is. I just don't like the texture of shredded chicken. Like I'll eat it if someone made it, but I prefer just not to shred my chicken. So we're just gonna cut, but we're gonna cut each piece long ways like this. I mean, we're basically just dicing the chicken, right? You know how to dice. I lost one! Break out the, um, break out the, the bagpipes for this fallen soldier. Let's hope we have no more casualties because I don't have a lot of chicken as it is. <laughs> and while we're doing this, I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn on the oven. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the most inconsistent part about this recipe is that I feel like every single time I've made this, I put it on different temps. We're gonna go 400, yeah. We'll do 400. So I'm gonna let the oven preheat while I finish cutting the rest of these chicken pieces. I just pulled the vegetables out of the microwave. This is what they look like. I dumped the excess water out, obviously because they were frozen, I had to put water in them. So you wanna make sure you dump out the excess water. So now the chicken that I've cut so far, just cause I'm running out of space on my board, I'm gonna dump it in there. Last piece done. Okay. Now we have all of our chicken and our veggies combined into this bowl. We need to go ahead and also put our mixture, the thing that's gonna like, you know, help all the ingredients of the pot pie like stick together. Okay, so for our filling, we're gonna be using two cans of Campbell's cream of chicken soup. And then I don't know why I have this family size one, but we're, you're also gonna wanna use a can of cream of mushroom soup. And actually, I know I said we need three cans, but we honestly might just need two because I feel like I don't have that much. The oven is ready, y'all. It's the final countdown. Before we get to mixing it, like I said, we do have to season this all together. I'm gonna go back to the Morton season all, not that side, that's the big side. And we don't wanna do too much. This is definitely seasoned to taste. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit first. I actually think we might use a third can only because I don't want it to dry out in the oven. What if this is expired? We're good. We're good, everybody. Now I'm not using the whole can, so I'm just gonna take this big like serving spoon and kind of just dump what I think I need. All right, let's give her a little taste. It could use just a little more, just a little more. I have my pan right here. My pan is about nine by 13. I think it's a little bit bigger, but it's essentially nine by 13, which is important. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, I started off by coating the whole bottom of the pan with this no stick easy release spray. This is just to help it not stick and give me an easy release. Um, the reason why I told y'all my pan size is because that will affect how many pie crusts you get. Um, I get the, I always get this box, this Pillsbury pie crust. It has two crusts inside and I end up getting two packs of this because I need two crusts for the bottom and two crusts for the top. So it just depends on what size your pan is, also what shape your pan is. So when you take your crust out of the pan, because obviously you're keeping them in the fridge, they're gonna be like a little hard to the touch. You can go ahead and put them in the microwave um, for a minute. I guess it just actually, it depends on what kind of microwave you have and like how powerful it is. 
my microwave is a little bit older so i probably had them in there total for about maybe a minute and like 15 seconds but you basically want your pie crust to be you want it to be able to hold its shape like you don't want it to be falling off of itself because it's so malleable that's a big word but you want it to be able to roll out easily so i'm putting one crust actually let me do this so y'all can see it so there's one crust at the bottom right now just like that and then on top of that we can start putting in the mixture Flatten it out, smooth it out, make sure that it's filling out all corners of the pan. I put one half of the crust on, so I'm about to do the other one right now. And then when you have it on there, you can roll your crust how you would like if you are particularly skilled in baking. I know people have like a certain way they like to roll their crust. I just like to tuck it all down in there. And then final, final step before we put it in the oven. I wanna go ahead and poke some holes into it for ventilation. You can go ahead and make it cute. I'm just doing mine just to get them in there. All right, so now that the holes are poked, everything is good. We're gonna go ahead and put this in there for about 45 minutes to an hour. And when we pull it out, the top is gonna be all golden brown and delicious. And the inside is gonna be like nice and like just ooey gooey and mm, I'm so excited. Okay, for an hour to 45 or 45 minutes to an hour. Oh. Okay, you guys, I just took out the oven and she looks gorgeous. The crust is like nice and crispy and like just that golden brown. It, I wish y'all could smell it in here. It smells amazing. Like she looks delicious. So I am currently in the middle of cleaning my apartment. So once I like am done cleaning and I settle down after my shower, we're gonna cut into our live and have a like just a live tasting. Okay, hello everyone. It is post shower Shamira here. I feel so ready to just cap off this weekend and try and get some good sleep before i start the week i have the pot pie here she's looking good well okay my biggest problem when i'm making pot pies is that they don't ever sit up straight like how i imagine a casserole would it always just kind of like falls so if i was on chopped i would uh get zero points for plating but my favorite part of the pot pie is the the crust anyway and the crust looks amazing but how it's on the plate does not look amazing let's go ahead and give her a taste now mind y'all of course we didn't measure anything and this is a recipe that like my mom taught me that i'm sure she got tomorrow online but i'm saying that to say that um i've made this before so i kind of have a reference point of how it should taste but it kind of tastes different every time that i make it because i don't um like use measurements or anything so let's see mm-hmm mm-hmm yep yeah yeah that's delicious i really feel like the key thing with making this dish is to make sure that you season everything when it's put together because i've forgotten to season it a few times and like it's okay but the key is making sure you season that final mixture before you put it into the pan i mean i'm gonna say 10 out of 10 it tastes delicious the the crust is just so good and flaky the inside like the actual like casserole itself is so well seasoned and everything is just so cohesive 10 out of 10. I'm telling y'all, it's a very easy recipe. It takes, it's very minimal effort. And if you do it the way I did it, like making your chicken in the air fryer, getting frozen vegetables and stuff. Like it is such a minimal input for a maximum output. Like anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more cooking videos. I probably will create them because keeping a promise to my younger self who said, I want to do more cooking videos. So I'm going to do them. I just need to think about what other recipes I feel confident in making. Or maybe I'll switch it up and I do recipes that I've never done before. We'll see. But anyway, I love you all very much. Please take care of yourselves out there. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to one another. Do something that not only makes you feel good, but makes you feel better. Talk nice to yourself before you talk nice to anybody else. Go listen to my podcast and I will... See you all in the next one. Peace.